I always like to add custom components to my website that go beyond the basic boring patterns that you see across the web. And that includes tabbed content as well. Take this stylish example from Cloudways. Not only does it have images in the tab titles, but the full width tab grid and subtle hover effects give it a stylish, modern feel. Now, I've built custom tabs like this before in Gutenberg, but I've always had to do nearly 100% of the customization myself with CSS because there were no block add-ons that had this functionality built in. That is, until I discovered this free plugin called Essential Blocks. This Gutenberg add-on has more than 30 different blocks, including fully responsive tabs with the ability to add icons or even custom images to the tab titles. Here's how you could use it to build a design like this one. All right, step number one is obviously to install the plugin and to grab that, we're just gonna go to plugins, add new. And here you can type essential blocks. And you can see, I already have this installed. Um, it's right here. We're gonna grab it and activate. And once you do, you'll see this essential blocks panel open up right here. And here you get full access to their knowledge base demo, demo pages. You can even uh, see all the installed blocks, activate and deactivate certain ones if you don't want them to show up in your editor. And as you can see, there's more than 40 different blocks. It's really a pretty complete toolkit for building uh, sites with Gutenberg and completely free. All right, I'm gonna go create a new page and let's start building our tabs. Now, when using Gutenberg as a page builder, you wanna make sure you have your uh, your container layout the way you want it to display on the front end so that on the back end, your design is gonna be approximately the same size. So I'm just gonna turn off the sidebars here and I'm gonna make the uh, content width, we're just gonna say full width. Next up, I'm just gonna add a row and this is built into essential blocks and this is just gonna help me control my spacing on the page. All right, so let's add our tabs component. So we're just gonna click plus, I'm gonna start typing tabs and it should show up right here, advanced tabs, okay? Now by default, this is how it looks and actually the structure is pretty similar to the design that we're gonna be building. We just have to adjust the styling. So let's throw in our images first. And you can see by default, this is using icons and you get a selection of built-in icons. You can see there's actually 45 pages of icons. You can easily just search for what you're looking for too. Okay, I mean, look, you got more than 16 different arrows that you can work with. Um, but you also have the option to use image icons. Now, by default, WordPress only supports um, raster image types like JPEG and PNG. However, when working with things like icons, I highly recommend using SVG as your file format. This is the scalable vector graphic format. It has a couple of advantages. One is the file size tends to be smaller for icon type shapes. And secondly, they're scalable in a way that you don't lose quality no matter how big or small the image is. Now to add SVG support for WordPress, you actually need a plugin to do that. It's not enabled by default. I'm using a free plugin called SVG support, but if you search in the repository, there's a bunch of different good options available. So this is gonna allow me to use SVGs in my image titles here. So let's set up our tab titles first and then we'll do the styling. I'm gonna set it up exactly the same as it is on the uh, the Cloudwise website. So we're gonna go Word, WordPress, Magento, Laravel. And adding a new tab, you just click this button right here and we can throw in PHP. Next up is adding the images. So like I said, uh, you can just select image in the tab settings here, and you can just throw in an image. And I already have these ones installed on my site, so I'm gonna grab this WordPress image here. Magento, and as you can see, this image here is an SVG. The WordPress image is a PNG, actually. Um, so it's not gonna look quite as good at small sizes. All right, next let's style these tabs up. So we're gonna go to the style tab, and we're gonna start with the uh, basic tab title typography. I'm gonna increase the padding around each of these and you can control each padding measurement separately if you want, you just have to click the unlink option. Um, but I'm gonna go from here and I'm gonna change the background color to white instead of gray, just like Cloudways has it. And for typography, um, I'm gonna increase the font weight here. And actually I can choose my own font. We just try something like Open Sans. And I'll increase the font weight. And I think we'll darken this text a little bit. Next up, we can increase the icon size, make them more visible. And this is really starting to take shape here. Now, before we do any more styling, I wanna throw in some content here. Now, one quirk of this plugin that I noticed, um, I'm just gonna insert a generate blocks headline block here. 
is that at least on my demo site here, if I adjust the typography, for example, if I try to put 50 pixels of margin around this um, on the top here, it's not gonna show up in the back end. And I don't know if that's being caused by the plugin itself or if I have some other conflict in my site. However, if I view this on the front end, it is putting the spacing in here. So that's just something to be aware of. Uh, but one way to get around this, and this is how I'm gonna design my layouts here. But if you uh, just wrap everything in a container block and I'm gonna open my my tabs browser here and you drag your headline into the container, all of a sudden the spacing controls start working just fine. And this isn't really a layout tutorial, so I'm just gonna do uh, this layout one time really quickly to show you how easy it is with a plugin like Generate Blocks. Um, this is a free plugin that I frequently use to, to do the layouts on my site just because it's so lean uh, and it's a very minimalist plugin. And I do have a number of tutorials on that if you wanna check it out. But I'm just gonna insert a grid here. So I'm gonna search for grid. And we're gonna do a 50-50 grid. In here, I'm gonna throw in a headline, paste that text, another headline, grab the paragraph text and convert that to a paragraph as the tag there. I'm gonna throw in a generate blocks button right here. I'm gonna get rid of all the spacing on that button. One great thing about generate blocks is for icons, you can literally just paste in uh, any SVG path as your icon. So I'm just gonna stick that right in there. Move the icon on the right, get rid of the background colors. Let's fix this text color because it clearly doesn't match the design that we were working with there. And in here, we'll just throw in an image. And again, I'm just gonna use the generate blocks image because why not? I already got this uh, installed on my media library and I'm just gonna throw this in here. All right, now that we got our placeholder content, we can start styling this up. Let's go back to our tabs here and under styles, I'm gonna go to the content settings. And I'm gonna add some more padding to the top and to the sides and the bottom as well. And we're probably gonna to have to dial that back on mobile, um, but that's closer to how it looks on the Cloudways design. We also are gonna get rid of this border. And by default, it has this little carrot, this triangle under here, and we can turn that off to match the Cloudways design as well. Next up under advanced, let's get the uh, border radius and the box shadow going. So under border controls, we can set a border radius, say of 10 pixels all the way around. And you can't really see anything yet until we add the box shadow. And let's just try something like this. Okay, we're gonna use just a subtle box shadow effect. That's starting to look good. now. You may notice that though you have some rounded corners here, that's what we want, but the corners up at the top are not rounded. And that's because the tabs here are actually overflowing the container. So they're sort of not respecting the rounding of the parent container. And unfortunately, there's no easy way to fix that from the plugin itself, at least not that I found. Um, but we can fix it with just one line of CSS. And one thing I love about this plugin is that Every single block has its own custom CSS panel, and it will even show you an example that has the exact uh, class of the element to target. So we can just throw our styles in here. And the style I'm gonna throw in is um, overflow hidden. And that will now make these corners up here respect the boundaries of the parent elephant element, and everything should be looking good. And we may have to use this section for one or two rules later on just to get everything looking uh, pixel perfect, but for now, we're gonna keep on styling. All right, next up, let's do our borders here. We're gonna go to the style tab and for the individual tab titles, we're going to throw a border on. And we'll do a solid border. And we're gonna unlink these values. We only want it on the bottom. We're gonna do two pixels on the bottom and we're just gonna pick, just gonna kind of eyeball it. Probably needs to be a little bit bluer. And then you can separately control the active colors. So for the active colors, we're gonna get rid of this background. We're gonna get rid of that text color and the icon color. In fact, maybe we'll make them even darker. And then we're gonna change the active border color. We're gonna make it solid as well. Once again, we're gonna make it the exact same dimensions as the inactive color. So two pixels on the bottom, but we're just gonna change that border color to this. And here on the front end, our tabs are looking nearly identical to the Cloudways version. 
Now, a couple last tweaks we can make. Um, we should adjust the responsive styling because right now it looks fine on tablet, but if we preview it on mobile, the tabs are not stacking properly, so we can adjust that. And just for fun, we're gonna add this cool dimming effect as well as the dividers between the tabs by using a little bit of CSS. All right, now this plugin has built-in responsive controls for pretty much every element of the tabs block. Um, you just go under style, and for each of these elements, you can see that there's a desktop, tablet, and mobile view. And so we wanna change the sizing of the individual tab titles, but I also, let's just view this first. Um, you can see that it's showing their stacking on mobile, but they actually don't on the front end. So there is some sort of disconnect between the front end and the back end. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna set each of these titles to be 50% width on mobile. And for whatever reason, it doesn't show properly on the back end. However, if we view this on the front end, it's rendering properly. And I think this is better than stacking the tabs because it makes them a little bit shorter and easier to navigate while you can still see the content of the tabs on mobile. Now we do need to add some spacing around this to make it clear that this is a tabs box. And then we need to get our dividers in here. So let's do the spacing first. And again, we're just gonna do mobile specific spacing. So instead of the tab title, we want the um, advanced settings, and this is basically just for the tabs block itself. And with the mobile view selected, we're just going to add a little bit of margin between the left and right, just so you can see that box shadow peeking through and kind of carving out our element here. And then you can see we still have all this padding from the desktop view on the content itself. And so we want to go back to style. And under content with the mobile view selected, we're going to dial back that padding by a lot. So let's go 20 on the left and right and 40 pixels on the top and bottom, just so it's much more legible and less squished. Now, one little tweak that we can do to make this look a little bit better, is you can see that the image is getting pushed all the way to the bottom because it's in the second column in our layout, because naturally the second column gets pushed to the bottom, but generate blocks, we can actually uh, we're gonna go just to the mobile view for generate blocks. We'll go to the text container and we can actually change a property called the order property. And this is the flex order. And if we just give this, and we'll just say two, it's gonna naturally push it below this one that has a flex order of nothing. And we can put, we can actually specify the image as a flex order of one. And you can do the same thing with your other container. So we could say order two, order one, just on mobile for the second tab. And now if we preview it on the front end, it looks normal on desktop and tablet. However, on mobile, the order is reversed and it looks a lot better. All right, let's add those CSS tweaks and then we are all done. Now, ordinarily, I would add the CSS right in the block, um, but because it's kind of squished over here, it's gonna be a little bit hard for you to read. So I'm gonna do it on the front end. I'm just gonna grab this class name and go to the additional CSS tab here and I'm gonna start writing my rules. So here's the class that we're gonna target and we actually need to go in here and I'm looking for the actual tab element here. And it's a list item element, an li element. And it doesn't have its own class, but the parent has a class. So we're gonna use the uh, that parent class. And then we're gonna say any list item that is the direct child of that class. That's what we're gonna target. And first we're gonna say position relative. Then we're gonna make, a, we're gonna copy this rule. And we're just gonna make one tweak, we're gonna say the inactive ones, because if you look here, this one has the active class, but all the rest have the inactive class. And we wanna make those ones fade away. So we're just gonna say opacity, and we'll try uh, 0.5. And now you can see that they are all fading when they're not the active class. Next, we're gonna get the divider in here. So we're gonna grab this again copy and paste, and this time we're gonna create a pseudo element. And you do this with the colon after or the colon before keyword. What if this does is it creates a simple element without actually being in the HTML DOM. And all you have to do to create it is give it content, and you'll see it's showing up now in the HTML right there. And in this case, our content is empty. We don't have any text content in there. We're just gonna make it into a shape. And we're gonna say position absolute. And I'm just gonna give it a height so you can see it. I'm gonna say height 100 pixels, width one pixel, background black, just so you can see it. Okay, so it's right now, it's just right in the middle of our elements. So let's fix this. We wanna position this absolutely, and you can actually use coordinates relative to the parent element, which in this case is this uh, list item element. So we wanna position it 
on the far right side and a little bit from the top and a little bit from the bottom. So first we're gonna move it to the right side of the container. It's zero pixels from the right on the right on the right edge of the element. Next we're gonna say we want it to be 12 pixels from the top. And we'll say we want it to be 12 pixels from the bottom as well. Now that didn't do anything because we've specified a fixed height for our element of 100 pixels. But if we remove that height, it's gonna be automatically the height of the difference between those two coordinates. And now all I need to do is just paste in the actual color there, which is this subtle transparent color. And finally, you probably can't really see it, but it's also putting it on the far element there and we don't want it on the last tab because it will look a little bit silly. Um, and you could write a whole separate rule or you could use the not selector and we're gonna say um, not last child. So it's not the last element and you probably can't even see it, but it disappeared. You can just trust me that it's gone. And just to be completionist, I'm gonna add one more rule inside a media query here. And all this is gonna do is when the screen is 768 pixels or smaller, that's the tablet breakpoint, we're just gonna get rid of, you can't even see, but it's putting another one of those, our dividers on this second element here. So we're just gonna say content unset for that. And just to highlight that it's working, if I made this nth child one, you can see it's getting rid of that one there, but we're gonna make it nth child two. And I call this done, this beautiful thing is looking basically pixel perfect, identical to the one on Cloudway's website. Now, these tabs are just one small part of this clean, modern landing page design from Cloudways. If you'd like to see me build this entire thing with Gutenberg blocks, let me know in the comments or suggest a different page to build. And if you're ready to level up your Gutenberg skills even further, check out this playlist right here. I'll see you in the next one.